Yet do not grow hopeful, dear and pleasant Rita, for the plains of Sachara did not hold victory in store for the peoples of Wildefrant. As the night dragged on into its center, when stars shone at their brightest, the Desiroth began to encircle their adversaries. Dark was the night, even with the assistance of flame, and the high commands did not come from a place of far sight. In fact, they came from a place of no sight, for King Trilsenya was still without eyes and served more as a symbolic inspiration for her troops. Wheatlank the Unshaven stood by close at hand, forever protecting the Lysamian king and horning out the better of the commands. Yet even she could not begin to realize that their enemies were closing in on all sides. Something or other. 23 something or another. Battle sight left and right. Alright, alright, we, we, we shall begin. Again, this is um, Kings of Angelon, chapter something or another, verse 22. The battle snaked left and right, weaving along the river and about the plain in a haphazard manner, with the only strategy of the Angelons being to slaughter whatever they found at the tip of their swords. Many of the men fighting on the fringes of the field then found escape that night, but the forces of Hagos tightened in upon the rest, forming seven circles of densely packed legions with nowhere to go lest they cut their way through Desiroth layers so thick that a hand could not be plunged into it farther than at arm's length. With these seven circles formed, the enemy from its stronghold in Angelon Othim sent out a decisive blow that would end the battle most definitively. Definitely, either or. That's it. They carried axes, blunt and steep. They carried dog friends, large and deep. They carried men who could not walk, or those who just wished to be held. They carried bread of Runenfeld. They carried ale, the kind that sucks. They carried mail to put on ducks, for ducks of all do need chain mail so that their bodies do not fail. When swords of metal pierce their fluff, they need the chainmail in order not to be sliced through entirely. They carried books of word and deeds. They carried them tickled in the weeds. To keep them tickled in the weeds, my bad. When nightly winds did make them bow, the books gave solace. This is how. To take their minds off of the cold with the drawings warm of women old. They carried spoons and cans of tin. They carried knives for their foreskin. They carried forks for all who live. They carried corks for cups that give. They carried greed within their coins. They carried doom within their loins. They carried freaks from other lands. They carried beaks inside those hands. They carried fingers with their fingers, those which hung down by their arms, which shoulders carried in their turn. They carried wood for which to burn. They carried shoes for they'd grow dirty, carried chairs to prove more sturdy. They carried grass to lay their heads. They carried asses for their beds. They carried swords for they weren't dumb. They carried canes for all want some. They carried robe and carried cape. All of them made to gruesome shape. They carried heinous tools that cut. They carried them to cut the nut. They carried flame to cook the hock. They carried corn fresh off the stock. They carried girth which kept them hungry. Carried sense to make their lungs breathe. Carried balls and carried games to scare off all the losing dames. They carried fear and carried wonder. They carried beer and all its blunder. They carried hope but not too much. They carried blood and cocks and such. They carried gifts for Horleo, the lord of all the stars and all that shines. They carried gold to make her shrines. They carried all these things and more to the true of Lakewood and its star. And all specifically in that order. That's it.